This is a Q&A lesson on rhythm or practicing rhythm. And thank you to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube followers for submitting questions. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel or the website, there's a link for that in the description. So we have two specific questions today and then a number of questions that I'm kind of paraphrasing, taking a, a number of like uh, similar questions and paraphrasing into three um, shorter questions. And I've been putting out all these videos uh, for my 60 rhythm, rhythm exercises from my volume two method book. So some of these are kind of follow up questions to those videos. So the first question is by Brian and his question is, your suggestion regarding 3-8 time is that there should be one strong beat per measure. Does this hold if the measure begins with 16th notes versus 8th notes? How should the second 16th note be played? So what he's referring to is that um, I've been teaching time signatures and when you have a time signature, there's a rhythmic hierarchy. So for example, in 3-8 time, the hierarchy is strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that is the hierarchy of the time signature. He's asking, what about the notes though? Are, is there also a hierarchy of, of the individual notes? And how do we do both? And so what I'll first say is that yes, there can be multiple hierarchies working at the same time. The hierarchy of the time signature, that one, two, three, three, strong, weak, weak. There might also be a hierarchy in the actual rhythms. If you're playing 16th notes, it might be ta 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 or like strong, weak, medium, strong, weak within a 16th notes. So like the hierarchy of the time signature, the hierarchy of the notes, the rhythmic notes. And then there might also be a hierarchy of the style that you're playing, the musical style. Some musical styles have accents on off beats or on you know, some styles of music will have a strong accent on the second beat of a piece, of a, of a measure. So yes, we can have all of these different hierarchies at the same time. And it's your job as the performer to bring those all together and to simplify them uh, most of the time to simplify them for the listener and for yourself. Um, so on the one hand, my, my answer is yes, it can be very complicated, many hierarchies. But on, you know, on the other hand, a lot of music, you, you really just feel quite naturally and you don't think it. So you don't want to overthink. You don't want to overthink any of this. So um, let me get into this. So almost all of the time with 3-8 time, for example, I will feel the time signature. I will feel a strong, weak, weak. Strong, weak, weak. I'll feel that gravity towards the first beat with my with my body. Now, in terms of the hierarchy of the individual notes, in like when you have sixteenth notes, you could break them down to be strong, weak, medium, strong, weak. So the eighth notes being stronger than the the offbeat sixteenth notes. But really, micromanaging rhythm in that way is kind of unrealistic most of the time in our playing we'll probably just do think in terms of strong weak and so if we're alternating fingers we might just be like strong weak strong weak strong weak strong weak strong weak strong weak if we want sometimes um, we want the notes to be very even um, we are trained in when we're playing our scales you know, to present them with all the notes evenly. But sometimes in music, we don't want that. You know, if I'm playing early music, often I want a strong, weak feeling to the beat. So I might want a scale to sound like, you know, strong, weak, strong, weak. And sometimes when we're adding slurs in, in Baroque music, you know, that the slurred note, the second note will be softer and that we we place those on the beat, so strong, weak, on the beat, off beat. And we'll do that so it has a stylistic result. So your question about sh how should the second 16th note be played, I think that really depends on what you want to get from the notes. Um, if, you're, if you want a strong, weak feeling or if you want it to be pretty even, sometimes we want it to be even as well. 
So it really depends on the, um, the style of the music you're playing and what result you want to get from it. But nevertheless, that structure exists, at least in music notation, and at least just in our minds. Whether we bring that out with our hand is, is going to be up to us, depending on what we want for the music. When you're playing rhythm exercises, you may want to experiment with really um, always still feeling the time signature in its simplest form. And then you might want to practice like playing the 16th notes evenly or uh, playing strong weak. But as a, you know, in a practical sense, most of the time when we have a bunch of 16th notes within a measure, we will aim for the main time signature notes. So like if it's 16th notes, we'll aim for the quarter note beats throughout. And we won't worry too much about what happens with the 16th notes unless we want there to be um, one way or the other. If we want it to be um, strong weak within the 16th notes or just even. But we'll, we will end up aiming more for the quarter note beats and that might equalize the quarter note beats more and that's okay. It really all depends. I would say the majority of times when I'm listening to someone play music and it's like a masterclass situation, I will often try to get them to just simplify the sound of the piece so that I can hear the time signature. Because when people are, it depends on the music, but it, it when people are performing, um, they might be doing all sorts of crazy things with their fingers. But most of the time when I'm listening, I just want to sit back and just like, and just be able to like, feel the time signature, feel the beat, right? Like you'll see people in the audience just like nodding their heads or tapping their foot. And that's what we want a lot of the time. So your job uh, as a performer is to, yes, consider all the, the smaller variables, all the nitty gritty stuff, but really you want to just present it in, in a simple way. So a simplification of all this complicated rhythm gets presented and often you can do that by just presenting the time signature more clearly. Very good question and it's very complicated but at the same time a lot of the time with this stuff it's like you at first you you deal with all these debates but then you just get you get into um, an aesthetic and a stylistic playing a way of playing the music in the style that it is appropriate and then you just end up feeling that in your hand. You don't think about any of this stuff. So you want to get to that point pretty quick where you get rid of the complicated overthinking of all this stuff and you just get it, you get the sound that you want into your hands and you go from there. It just gets more complicated when we're talking about rhythmic exercises because then those, those rhythmic hierarchies, we're thinking about them more. In music, a lot of the time, we don't think about it all that much. Um, it's a stylistic sound that we're going for. When I'm playing Baroque music, I have a stylistic feel for it. I don't think about it too much. Very good question, though. <laughs> we can't spend all day on it, although I could. I could dedicate many videos to just that one question. So James asks, do we always feel the hierarchy of the time signature? Uh, what about in a mazurka where the second beat might be accented on a regular basis? So very good question. Um, similar to the, the previous question, we can have more than one um, thing happening at the same time. I would say in, you know, the example of a mazurka is a great one because what if we're kind of feeling the second beat as a weight? And partly we can, I can teach this through just the terminology that we use. You know, I will feel there still that there's a certain gravity towards the first beat. And when I'm feeling the beat, I still feel one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, I feel that with my body and if I'm tapping my foot or something. But there's a, a stylistic weight on the second beat. So although I'm feeling one, two, three, one, two, you know, I might, I might push out the second beat with my hands quite a bit despite the fact that I'm still just, I'm feeling a gravity that pulls me towards the first beat. So those different terminologies that you end up using kind of explain the situation a little bit. It's that there's this certain gravity towards the first beat and this thing happening that we feel naturally, but there happens to be a weight on the second beat. 
And I think what you'll find a lot of the time, too, is that it's partially sometimes written into the music. Uh, like in a mazurka, you, if it's if it's a regular thing on the sec, a regular accent on the second beat, you'll often see like a chord there or a longer rhythm and something that actually kind of emphasizes the 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 stylistic concern just automatically through the actual music, especially in guitar music. So when you don't have that, you might just have like on the first beat, you know, a chord followed by some 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 notes which doesn't give you a huge opportunity to accent the second beat anyway. Whereas in a mazurka, you might like find like there's a big chord on the second beat that emphasizes it. So I think a lot of the time, the music itself uh, will present uh, what you should do with it. So you don't, you have to think about it, but it'll be there in the music. But yeah, to answer your question is that I, I actually do think that, yes, we still feel the hierarchy of the time signature even when there's a stylistic weight on a, a certain beat or an accent. You know, in, in reggae, for example, like when you think about it, I still feel the, the beat even though we're mainly playing off beats, you know. You know, I'm still feeling the beat, but I'm only playing off beats. And so the, those two things can exist at the same time that I'm feeling one thing but playing a different thing. I think in the in in terms of like the mazurka, you actually do feel the second beat with your body quite a bit. Um, but that that doesn't mean that the hierarchy of the time signature disappears in any way. So there, like the previous question, there's this duality and this and something that you could say is very complicated. But in reality, you really just feel the time signature and then you you play it with a stylistic weight on certain beats and it's not, there's no problem there. There's no conflict. It actually just, it works together and complements itself because in that particular case, the time signature keeps pull, giving us momentum forward towards the first beat, but that second beat um, makes it a stylized um, dance. And so those two things actually help each other um, complete the piece. You know, the time signature helps us keep keep it rolling, and the style style is of interest to us. And I think that that's usually going to be my answer: is that yes, we feel the hierarchy of the time signature, but we do all sorts of things with the music. Okay, so here are some paraphrased questions I've, that you know people are are asking. So the first one has to do with dotted rhythms. So what is the best way to count dotted rhythms? People asked all sorts of individual questions regarding rhythms, uh, specific rhythms, but let me just use the dotted rhythm as an example. Uh, like I was saying before, your job is usually to simplify the music. So I think one thing that students have problems with is simplifying rhythms. The best way to count it let's say you have a dotted quarter note, would just be to count the time signature. One, two, three. You know, like you just play the rhythm, you feel the beats, but you play the rhythms where they occur. One, two, three. So I feel the second beat, but I play that eighth note on the end of two. You could count it with counting the eighth notes. One and two and three and. But really, usually that's, um, that's a very complicated way of counting it. It's good to do. It's good to do on occasion to check your rhythm. You know, that, that clarifies what the rhythm is. One and two and three tells you exactly where that rhythm occurs. But it's not really the feel of the music usually. Usually it's just like one, two, three. One, two, three. That's the feeling of the music much more natural simplifies it instead of one and two and three and that's very um like so so many beats and it, it over complicates it so the best way to count rhythms is often to just count the actual time signature same thing if you have 16th notes right one two three you know you just play the 16th notes 
And I think what you'll find is that uh, as you get more of a foundation and more advanced with your rhythm, you'll know what rhythms feel like and you'll be able to just play them. You won't, you won't have to think too much. You'll just want to kind of feel the beat and then play whatever rhythm comes up because you'll just know the rhythms. You'll know how they feel. They're part of your muscle memory. Um, just like talking, you know, you don't, you, don't, um, you don't think about it. You just, you do it. So the best way to count a lot of your rhythms is to just count the time signature. Sometimes for educational reasons, it might be useful just to do a little bit of subdivision of the beat by counting like the ands in that example. Um, and to just to get down into the nitty gritty. Uh, but the majority of the time, you really just want to feel that time signature and play it. You know, tap your foot and play the rhythms. Uh, that That is really the best and most natural way because really, um, like I said before, your job is usually to simplify the complicated aspects of a piece and present something simple. That's why it, when we listen to pros play something really complicated, it can sound so beautiful and simple. But but if we're looking at the score, we're like, oh, wow, like they're they're doing so much. But they're presenting something very simple to us. And that's your job with rhythm as well, is that you might get all wrapped up and overthink a lot of your rhythms and and you might want to like check it carefully in certain ways but in the end you want to present something very simple another question people had is about changing the feel of the rhythmic hierarchy in a time signature um some people were saying that they've noticed that in 4/4 time sometimes i simplify that to to just um cut time to two beats per measure or in six eight time we don't necessarily feel every eighth note we simplify it to two beats per measure there as well my answer to that is that yes um often like actually quite often with four four time i will simplify it to cut time so instead of one two three four i'll just feel one three one three you know i'll feel just those two main beats out of the four because it simplifies the feel of the music especially at faster tempos the more we do this one two three four one two three four the more the music sounds like that which might be desirable sometimes but a lot of the time i i actually want to simplify it and get away from one two three four and just feel one two ta 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 rather than ta 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 so yes the rhythmic hierarchy is there in 4/4 time but we can simplify it to the stronger beats in 4/4 time we have strong weak medium strong weak so we're just ending up feeling the stronger beats mainly same thing we do it all the time with 6/8 time right we often do not count 6/8 1 2 3 4 5 6 we often count it 1 2 Ta 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 ta. When you see conductors conduct six eight time, they'll they'll often just do two beats with their hand. One two three four five six. One two three four five six. And they won't even be counting like that. They'll just be literally going like here, 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 and then you just play it. Ta 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 ta. Um. But my head is just feeling those main beats. So yes, sometimes we do change the hierarchy. We don't actually, we don't change the hierarchy. We just emphasize the simplest version of it. Uh, that's actually the best way to describe it. Is we, we push out the simplest um, version of the time signature for simplification. And sometimes it just creates a much less cluttered musical um, delivery on a phrase or the notes the next question is a lot of people ask about this is it okay to always tap my foot while playing um i i'm gonna say in general yes um but as with any habit that you might have you might want to occasionally do you play without tapping your foot just to make sure that you can um i think Tapping your foot to the beat, to the time signature, while you play, is an 
excellent thing to be able to do. In fact, I make a point of most of the time when I'm playing pieces to be able to do that because it means that I'm feeling the time signature while playing the various rhythms. So that's it's a really great body connection to the beat while you do all this playing. So I really encourage that and it's something I really get students to do. But yeah, like on, in certain situations, like uh, in an ensemble, uh, maybe people's foot tapping is, is audible. So you want to make sure that you're not, you know, maybe making it audible, especially if you're wrong. <laughs> and then it can really mess people up to hear your foot tapping. So you want to tap silently, but feel it. Um, and e even visually, sometimes if it's overly visual, sometimes that can be really good. If you're very confident with your rhythm, you can actually almost conduct your your ensemble partner with your foot but maybe sometimes it's distracting and then you know in those times I've learned to like for example like to feel my foot moving but really just be tapping my toe in my shoe so I can really feel it but my neighbor can't really see it unless they're looking at my foot very specifically so um, yeah I think it's a great thing to do be able to do it to tap your foot while playing I think it's an important skill actually but just make sure that you're able to turn that off if you need to and that you're not completely relying on it to just to play um, and find ways of like being a little bit more subtle sometimes with it, in, in, especially in ensemble situations. And the final question is very similar, is that uh, people were asking about metronome use. Is it okay to always use a metronome when practicing? Uh, I'm a big fan of the metronome. I encourage my students to use the metronome. But we should remember that it's kind of a tool that we use to identify um, rhythm, rhythm issues a lot of the time. It really depends on the style of music you're playing, but what I often do with the metronome is I will use it at the big, when I first learn a piece to make sure that I understand all the rhythms, I'm, that I'm playing them correctly, that my tempo is consistent through a piece. So, uh, you know, when I'm learning it slowly, I will use a metronome and I will just map out th the whole piece to make sure that I'm, I'm doing it properly, I'm aware of my playing, I'm aware of certain things, and that I'm feeling the time signature. So, if you use the metronome a lot, I would recommend that you have it set to the time signature. Um, I think that's, that's very important, um, that you don't set it to, like, the eighth, eighth notes in a in a you know if you're in four four time if you set it to the eighth notes that's not really the beat that you want to feel set it to the quarter note or the half note for a more natural simplified feel but yes like using the metronome is is often um, incredibly helpful and very useful for guitarists especially but for for any musician um, but yeah just like with the foot tapping Use it, but make sure you're, you're also able to turn it off and play without it. Because it, it's usually more of a tool to help us rather than something to rely on. The other thing I'll, I'll, I'll say about that too is that like I will use the metronome in, in various ways in certain situations. Sometimes I will set it to the eighth note to practice certain rhythms, um, especially when I'm first learning a piece. And it depends on the style that you're playing too. Like in rom like romantic era music like Tarega, um, I will use it at the very beginning when I'm first learning the piece, but I definitely want to turn that off later because it will it might kind of strangle the, the natural rubato that is used in that music. Um, so I, I like to turn it off most of the time later on to make sure I'm getting like some, you know, push and pull to the rhythm and phrasing and um, it's not sounding too robotic. In other styles of music, like sometimes in Bach, I'll use it much more. But I always remember that, I, especially as I get to nearing completion of a piece, to really start turning it off so that I, I, I'm i doing natural musical gestures and I haven't built my whole playing style around a metronome. So again, yeah, use it as a helpful tool. Use it often, but don't use it so much that it starts making decisions for your music making. Uh, make sure you are turning it off. So I hope that you found that useful. Um, some pretty complicated discussions there, but I think it all comes down to one thing, is that often you want to simplify the music and you want to just um, take all those complicated rhythms and feel them in a natural way 
and and then and that's pretty much it and then you just play and you enjoy you don't overthink it you might sometimes have these overthinking sessions where you're thinking about things uh, and you're over complicating it but your job is to absorb it all and then spit out something that's much more simple and that's much more natural and enjoyable in the end like you know the idea that we play kind of by ear we have music structure and music notation but we generally play by by ear because there's stylistic concerns to to be heard that's very true um all of the structure exists but in the end we play music in the way it should sound and in, and with our feeling it in a very natural way with our bodies so um we'll be discussing this more as i go through the rest of the rhythm exercises but i hope that that answered a couple of your questions <laughs>